This brings us up to this slide, which arguably is the most important slide in the entire chapter. What this slide shows you is it shows the seven alternative system development approaches along the top here, and it shows you characteristics of different projects along the side here, and it indicates whether these approaches are good fits based on the nature of these characteristics. Now again, note that the three first ones, Waterfall, Parallel, and V-Model, are all the so-called structured approaches, and they have more similarities than they have differences. On the other hand, the last four, iterative system prototyping, throwaway prototyping, and agile development are, are unstructured, are designed to speed things up, and characteristically are very different from the so-called structured approaches. So let's go through this list, spend a couple of minutes, now, this is important. You, you should be able to put yourself in the shoes of a project manager and be able to select one of these project development methodologies based on these characteristics. In fact, there'll be some questions in the quiz in the first, uh, in the midterm that are tied to this. So let's go through these one at a time. Okay. How do you choose a methodology? Note that no one methodology is best. It depends on the fit with these characteristics. What about if you have unclear user requirements? Well, in that case, the structured approaches are, are, are the worst choices. They're a poor fit. The structured approach, approaches require very clear user requirements. They must be known in advance, stable, and unchanging. So if you have unclear user requirements, you're better off using one of the second group, and particularly system prototyping, throwaway prototyping, or agile development, because those are designed to accommodate projects where you know that you don't know all the requirements, that is, where user requirements are unclear. What about if you're going to use unfamiliar technology? Well, again, the, the three waterfall variants, waterfall approaches are poor because those are large scale, long term system development approaches where you, you should be familiar with the technology. Things will not go well if you are unfamiliar with the technology. Furthermore, system prototyping and agile prototyping don't work well with unfamiliar technology either. Uh, both the throwaway prototyping and the iterative prototyping excel as the choice of methodology when you have unfamiliar technology because those approaches introduce the technology before design is complete. You have a choice to introduce those technologies before design is complete. What about complex systems? If you have complex systems, they require a lot of integration with other systems. They're broad in scope. Um, they're used by a lot of people, a large part of the organization. Generally, the two worst methodologies in that case are system prototyping and agile development. Those two just simply are not, those methodologies or approaches are not suited to flesh out complex designs. Now, in some systems, re reliability is, is critical. We talked about some of them, missile control systems, banking. For other systems, they're not, reliability is not so critical. Internet video, games. V model is, is useful when reliability is important due to the heavy emphasis on testing in V model. Also, when the system must be reliable, throwaway prototyping excels because many different approaches to design prototypes can be tested. 
What about if you have projects that have to be developed quickly? Generally, the iterative approach, the system prototyping approach, and the agile development approach are best with short time frames because short time frames are better suited to the so-called rapid application approaches and to agile development. They are meant to speed up the process and get systems finished more quickly. Parallel isn't too bad, but really in general, if you have a short time schedule to get the system finished, the, the structured approaches aren't, aren't the best choice. Even parallel would not be a very good choice. This last characteristic with schedule visibility, that means how important is it that everyone can be able to, all of the managers and the builders and the sponsors are able to see how the schedule is progressing. Well, again, the, the RAD and the Agile approaches are better because they're meant to speed things along and to progress quickly. Um, the structured approaches are, are not good for systems in which you time is critical and systems in which you want to be able to see exactly when everything is going to be developed. Okay, so again, this slide's very important. It really incorporates everything that we've discussed about the different methodologies and when to use the different methodologies. So you want to pay some attention and arrive at an understanding of uh, which methodologies are good and which are not good when you have these various characteristics.